Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy, in this video we are going to talk about six step method of ECG interpretation. Whenever you approach a patient, whenever you approach a disease, you always have a stepwise systemic manner to deal with it. The same applies to ECG. In ECG, we also have a six step approach to ECG interpretation so that you do not miss out any important point, any important finding in the ECG. The six steps of ECG interpretation include the first step where you see the general impression. What is your general impression? In the second step, you look at the calibration of ECG. In the third step, you go for rhythm interpretation. In the fourth step, you assess the QRS complex and in QRS, you look for R wave progression, excess deviations and bundle branch and fascicular blocks. In the fifth step, you look for hypertrophies. And in the sixth step, you look for ischemia and infarction. Now you would be thinking that why have I put ischemia and infarction in the last step of ECG interpretation? Basically, whenever an ECG is showing ischemia or infarction and ST segment elevation, we always get blinded by the very fact that that patient is having infarction and we miss out many important details in the ECG. Now, if the patient is having ischemia or infarction and there is an emergency, in that case, you can quickly go for ischemia and infarction assessment and you treat the patient. But if in exams, they give you an ECG and they ask you to interpret that ECG, you have to go through this stepwise manner and you do not consider ischemia and infarction very quickly. You also calc uh, see for the first five steps, you look for hypertrophies, you look for the QRS complex, you look for excess deviation, you look for bundle branch block because there are many important findings present in the ECG other than ischemia and infarction. So, if they give you an ECG and they want you to interpret that ECG, you have to follow this six step method. In the words, if there is an emergency, definitely you can't do all these six step methods. What you do is that you look at the general impression, you see the ST segment elevations and you quickly treat the patient. But in the exams, if they want a good detailed interpretation of the ECG or if they send you the ECG for an interpretation and you have the time, you follow the six step method. Now coming to the first step of general impression. In the first step of general impression, you see that what is your first glance impression? What is your first look impression? If someone hands you over an ECG and you just have a glance over that ECG, what is your first impression? Is it a very fast rhythm? Is it a very slow rhythm? Or there are ugly morphologies present in the ECG? That is called as a first general impression. Now, this first step of general impression is very important in handling the emergencies where you quickly have a first glance and you have the general impression that whether it is very fast, whether it is very slow, whether it is having the ugly morphologies because these indicate emergencies. Now, I'll show you some ECGs for at least 3-4 seconds and you have to take a general impression from it. You do not need to calculate rates, rhythms and anything. You just have a general impression whether that, that is a fast rhythm or it is a slow rhythm or there are ugly morphologies present in it. Now, coming to the first ECG. So, what is your general impression? It is a very fast ECG. Now, the first glance impression is that the rate of this ECG is very rapid. The rate is very high. Now, going to the second ECG, look at the ECG for 2-3 seconds and see what is your general impression about it. What is the general impression of this ECG? This is a very slow ECG, a very slow rhythm. The first glance look, the first impression that we have is that it is the slow ECG. Now going to the next one. What is your first glance impression? The first glance impression should be that there are ugly morphologies present in the ECG. These are the abnormal rhythms. So if the very first glance that we have, we get an impression that there are ugly morphologies present in the ECG. Now moving on to the next one. So what was your first glance impression about this ECG? This ECG is showing ugly morphologies. So the first impression is very important. The first step in ECG interpretation is your general impression that whether it is very fast, whether it is very slow or there are ugly morphologies present in it. Now coming to the step two 
of six step ecg interpretation method in the step step two you look at the calibration of ecg whether the calibration is standard or not now what is calibration normally in ecg you see a small box like this on the right or left side of the ecg that actually shows the calibration of ecg this box in ecg actually shows the amplitude and speed at which the ecg machine is printing out the ecg that is called as the calibration now the width actually shows the speed at which the ecg machine is printing out and the height of this box actually shows the amplitude at which the currents or voltages are being recorded now a normal calibration of ecg or what you call a standard calibration of ecg has this box which is two large boxes tall and one small box wide the height of this calibration the standard calibration is really two large boxes and the width of the standard calibration is one small box which indicates that the ecg machine is printing this paper at 25 millimeter per seconds so that is called as a standard calibration at which most of the ecgs in words are printed at this rate that is the standard calibration you always have to look at the calibration because if the calibration of the ecg machine is altered if the calibration is changed and it is not the standard calibration you will see either high voltages if it is more tall or you will see increased speed at which the ecg machine is printing out paper so it will alter your interpretation so you always look at the calibration whether the calibration is standard or not now in this ecg you can see that it is almost two large boxes tall and almost one large box wide so it is the standard calibration and standard calibration will show an ecg like this now if you compare this ecg with this one you will see that the calibration is not standard the height of this calibration box is one large box tall and one large box wide which is a, not a standard calibration and as i said the height of this calibration box shows the amplitude at which the currents are being recorded now if you see the qrs complex and the waves you can appreciate that the the amplitude has also been cut off by half the amplitude of wave is also reduced by half so that is the effect of changing the calibration of ecg now if you see this one this is also another non standard calibration of ecg in the non standard calibration you can see that the height is more than two boxes the height of this calibration box is having 1 2 3 4 large boxes and the width is also cut to half it is half large box so the calibration over here is non standard and when you increase the height the amplitude also doubles now look at the qrs complex over here the qrs complex size has doubled due to the increase in the calibration look at the p waves look at the qrs complexes how their heights have increased how their heights have doubled up due to the increase in calibration height now what if you change the width of this calibration box normal standard width of this calibration box is one large box and as i said the width shows the speed at which the ecg machine is printing out the paper if it is one large box wide it means that the ecg machine is printing the paper at 25 mm per seconds and if you double up the width of this calibration box if it is two large boxes wide it means that you have doubled up the speed at which the ecg machine is printing out paper and that is a non standard calibration 50 mm per second now if you change the calibration it changes the measurements of even the small boxes the small box in this standard calibration is equal to 0.04 seconds and the small box over here as the ecg machine is printing out the paper rapidly so the time is less the small box in this calibration will be equal to 0.02 seconds so it changes everything if you change the calibration so the second most important step in ecg interpretation is that you look at the calibration markers that whether the calibration markers are standard or non standard now coming to the step 3 the first step was general impression the second step was calibration the third step is rhythm determination remember rhythm determination is the most important step of ecg interpretation and rhythm interpretation rhythm determination is also the very detailed step 
Now, if I, I have also made separate video playlist on different rhythms, I have talked about sinus block, sinus pause, sinus arrest, atrial rhythms, premature atrial complexes, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, wandering atrial pacemaker, multifocal atrial tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia, fibrillations, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. I have talked about all these different rhythms. Now, when you have mastered these abnormal rhythms, it becomes very easy for you to interpret ECG by six step method. In rhythm determination, when you are about to assess these all abnormalities, in rhythm determination, you determine the rate, you determine the regularity, you look at the P waves, you assess the PR interval, you assess the QRS complex, and then you give the interpretation. And you also have a knowledge of these abnormal rhythms. I have talked about the rhythm determination and abnormal rhythms in detail. The link of that playlist is given in the description below. You must look at those videos, you must learn these abnormal rhythms and it will even help you more in managing the patients with these abnormal rhythms. And it will make your concept clear about ECG interpretation by six step method. Now in the subsequent videos, we'll be showing ECGs over here and we'll look at the six step method. We'll use the six step method. We will first comment on the general impression, the second step, the calibration, the third step, the rhythm interpretation, the fourth step, the QRS complex. And in the fifth step, we'll look at the hypertrophies. And in the sixth step, we'll look at the ischemias. So stay tuned and make sure to watch the next videos. Before going into the summary, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about the six step method of ECG interpretation. We talked about the first step, the general impression, whether the ECG is very fast, very slow, or there are ugly morphologies. Then we interpreted some ECGs by looking at it, the general impression we got. Step two, the calibration, the normal standard calibration that shows the speed at which the ECG machine is printing out paper and the voltage. Then we talked about different non-standard calibrations. Then we talked about what if you change the width of this calibration. In the step 3, we briefly talked about what is rhythm determination. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy. The abnormal rhythms as well as the six-step method playlists. The link of those videos are given in the description below. Thank you very much.